Ah, now this thing is on. Very good. I am told and I believe and I'm convinced I am talking to the cream of our society at your age. Can you clap for yourselves? What I am seeing in front of me is nothing but leadership. Can you clap for yourselves again? What I am seeing in front of me are Kenyans who have distinguished, who have differentiated, who have pronounced themselves as the ones who will make Kenya a developed country to be among the top developed countries in the world. And so, when I was invited to come and speak to this very important group, I said, what a honor. Because when you have been selected to be part of the Wings to Fly, you have demonstrated that you can fly in the first place. Can you clap for yourself for demonstrating that? And I want to pronounce today as I'm talking that you are going to continue flying and you are the Kenyans who are going to make a big difference in this country. And so my very, very important uh, listeners, because you are the reason why you are here and why we are here, uh, distinguished scholars who are in the Wings to Fly program. Um, there are ladies and gentlemen who are here, but I think you are the distinguished people that have brought us here. All protocols observed, I want to say, uh, I'm going to spend about 25 minutes or so, and I put my watch on the side so that I can watch on time, because time is money. What did I say? Time is? Money. Yes. And so I want us to make sure that we use our time properly. And one of the lessons that I want you to pick from my speech is that you should plan your time properly so that you can use it well, because time is one of the few resources that you can never recreate it. Once it's gone, it's gone. Are we together? And therefore, that's why I'm really very pleased uh, to be here this afternoon um, as I'm talking to you young scholars. But I think before I start talking formally, let me do a quick introduction of myself. I was born about 10,000 years ago. Who believes that? <laughs> there, there are some guys who have raised their hands. That's good. I mean, I was born uh, many years ago. And I went to primary school in some rural parts of Ukambani, from my name. Hey, do we have somebody from Makweni here? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, are we together? And so that's where I was born. That's where I was bred. That's where I went to primary school. I went to a day secondary school. Nipigio Makofi. But starting from when I was young in my life, I said I will never be a backbencher. I don't know what you say in Sheng when you say, I will never be. I don't know the latest words in uh, the language that we have, but I refused. I put an X to being a backbencher. I always insisted 
to be in the front seat like you are seeing these people in the front seat. Because when you are somewhere near the front, the probability of you jumping and being on the other side facing the multitude is very high. Are we together? So it is easier for the guys who are sitting here. And can we clap for them, the ones who are in the first row? It is very easy for them to jump and come here and be the ones talking. So I refuse to be a backbencher. And therefore, all the way through my primary school, my high school, my university, I was either number one, and if I did very badly, I was number two. And though that was right through in my first degree, that was right through my second degree, and also right through my PhD. I also want to say, as I was doing professional exams, my CPA, anybody heard about an animal called CPA here? Yes. I did that animal. And I was number one in my year. I also did certified public secretary. I also did chartered banking. And I also did chartered arbitration exams. And that I did to make sure that I am not a bank pager, wherever I am. And so, if I am to move quickly and say, just finish about who I am, is that I refuse to be a what? So if you forget everything else that I've said today and what I'm going to say, remember to refuse to be a backbencher. And remember to be at the top. To rem remember to be in the leadership. Hands up who is in a leadership of something, even if it is Chama Chawanawake. <laughs> Where are the leaders? Sito Pijifigia Makofi, let's clap for ourselves. So what I want to encourage us, wherever you are, be in the leadership. Even if it is praying for food, be in the leadership for the prayer. Even if it is saying amen, say amen so loudly such that anybody with doubt will know this guy is serious. He wants to say amen so that he can eat. Amen. Amen. And so, really, um, that's, that's about myself. I am the principal secretary in the Ministry of Planning. So I look after all the planning that is being done in the country. I came with uh, three of my colleagues that I would like to introduce. Moleli, wave to them. Wave to that guy and say, whoo! <laughs> and for small effects, Moleli went to secondary school in Alliance High School. Can we clap for him? And I also came with my PA. I have two personal assistants. I came with scholar Wanjiko Njire. Wanjiko, come, come. What do you see? Okay, sit down. <laughs> and then I came with um, Catherine Mwoki, uh, who works with me in midst of planning. So to what became a coffee hour was it? And then in my previous job, where I was in Vision Delivery Board, I was working with another nice lady called... Um, Sanap... Eh? What is the name of it? Sophie Sanapei, Apigio Makofi. Sophie, come. That is Sophie Sanapei. I was working with her. And, and so now, let me make my speech very quickly. So, the subject that I've been asked to speak about, the one about um, value system, uh, which drives national development, 
is a subject that is very, very dear to me. And I say so because it's going to help us to develop Kenya by making sure that we have got future transformative leaders. But this is not very future. It is now. You guys are transformative in yourselves. Can you clap for yourselves? You are transformative. But so, let's first agree on um, what is a value system? What is a national value system? And scholars like you, and like the ones who are here, they tell us that a value system is a set of acceptable standards of behavior. A set of acceptable standards of behavior. And this is very important for us in our society because, you know, human beings are social in nature. We live together in groups. And so, for us to be able to interact in an orderly manner, we need to have a codified and generally accepted set of standards of behavior. And these are the ones who will guide our conduct in all aspects of life. And I know in the schools where you are, So in the schools where you are, you must have had values that you can say you had in that school. And so from the onset, let us say as human beings, we don't want to be guided by the law of the jungle. You've heard about survival for the fittest. You've heard about uh, situations where there's so much inequality where people don't mind about one another. So as people, we want to be in a society where there is equity, where people don't just trample on one another. And so from the onset, I want us also to agree that um, we need defined and codified values, and that is what societies use as they live. So in every society, uh, you will find some standards of behavior which are likely to be informed by a number of factors. For instance, this could be the stage of development of a country because in developed countries, there's a way they be behave. It could also be whether you live in a rural area or an urban area. It could also be something defined by the climate. People in uh, cold countries like Iceland, they behave differently than us. It could be the environment. So there are many factors that can define the kind of standards of behavior that are acceptable. And so, because I'm talking about development, let's agree what is development. And here, scholars, again like you, will tell us that uh, development is just a marked advancement. Advancement kuendelea na mbele. So, and this is advancement in socioeconomic circumstances of our people, uh, which, for instance, is education, which is why you are here. It could be health. It could be your incomes. The amount of money that you are going to make when you are working or doing business. It could be your wealth. It could be employment. It could be the environment, and so on and so forth. And therefore, what is important is that um, as we are seeking to achieve advancement in our society, uh, we must make sure that this is not accidental. Because you can move forward just like the way you have attained good standards in education without planning, without engaging seriously in what you are doing. So, for instance, any family, any individual, a community, you must plan so that you succeed. And that is why, as we read the Bible, uh, those who read the Bible, there was something that was falling from heaven. What was it called? I want you to raise your hand if you have seen manna falling from heaven. Have you seen any? Yes. Have you seen any? Yes. Those who are saying yes, raise your hands. Who has seen manna falling from heaven? And how did it look like? Okay. Those who have not seen manna falling from heaven, raise your hands. Thank you. Put your hands down. When I went to Israel about 10 years ago, 
they told me manna stopped falling from heaven. And therefore, there are no free lunches in the city. You must work for what you want to achieve. And therefore, talking about advancement, we must work so that we can achieve that advancement. And so this requires us to vision. Are we together? And that is where Vision 2030 comes in. Who knows what is Vision 2030 in Swahili? Mara moja. Nani anajua Vision 20 inaitwaje kwa lugha ya Kiswahili na aongee Kiswahili sanifu, wacha Kiswahili ya hapa bara na taa Kiswahili cha Tanzania kule pwani. Can we pass the mic to somebody? Give a mic to somebody. I think I've heard nenini Ruwaza. Nani alisema Ruwaza inue mkono? Rubi pige makofi. So vision is Ruwaza. So you must see far. You must see far. You must have vision. And that is what we are doing in Vision 2030. You follow up that vision by doing a plan. Yaani kama unaona mbele unasema mahali unaweza unataka kwenda lazima uwe na mpangilio. Usilazima uwe na nini? Mpangilio. Kiswahili changu si mbaya sana kweli, si ndio? Si sanifu. Okay, so we must have plans. We must come up with the prioritization of those plans. We must come up with the execution of plans and that is important because we have to put all the resources together so that we can achieve that which we want. And so, what we have heard from leaders in development ports is that project implementation is very, very important uh, for all of us, and that is where human capital, yani human capital, which is what now we are seeking to talk about, comes in. And in human capital, we are talking about the total collection of skills that you have. We are talking about the education that you have and which you are going to get. We are talking about the capacity, the attributes that uh, you are going to bring in so that we can be very productive. And so I want to share with you that human capital, what you can do is very, very important. And I'm happy you are investing in your human capital because that is why you are in the Wings to Fly program. And so, looking at matters of law, I want to say, if you turn to the Constitution of Kenya, it helps us when we are thinking about values. In Article 10, you'll find all the values that are important listed there, um, including patriotism, including sharing and evolution, integrity, uh, human dignity, equity, and so on and so forth. And so, my attention is drawn to somebody laughing at the Constitution. Did something go wrong? Are we together? Yes. Is anybody seeing me disappearing? Because if you are seeing me disappearing and getting smaller, I want to put it to you, I am not moving. It is you who is having a quiet moment. Okay? So stay awake, stay with me. And so, uh, the Constitution also gives us frameworks that uh, we normally use so that we can promote national values. There are articles, there are laws, there are regulations that have been passed. And um, I want to say for a fact that in Kenya, we are pushing and in implementing the constitution in a lot of ways uh, through our long-term development planning. That is what we do in my ministry uh, to support Vision 2030 and to make sure that uh, we do the right things we even have a sector in our planning called national values and ethics. And in these national values and ethics, what we have done is to identify who are the main carriers of national values. If we were to be asked after this engagement with me, who are the main carriers and who should be the drivers of ethics and good values? Are you anywhere in the equation? Okay. Let me confirm to you what we found when we did our research in this area. We found that, first of all, the individual is the most important carrier and driver of values. You, me, him, her, all of us. That is followed by the family. 
Just go back and reflect on your, the family. How you relate with your brother. How many times have you fought your, your brother? Huh? He has said ten times, but no, actually I'm just lying. Um, so the values you have in the family are very important. Another important institution is the school, the education institution where you are. What you do in that institution is an important carry and driver of values. Another one is religious and faith institutions. The Christianity, Islam, um, whatever other faith that you belong to, those are good values, uh, sorry, uh, carriers of values. Then you can add the government, um, the uh, media, and many other institutions. So the bottom line is that you are an important component of the value system in Kenya. And so why then should we be bothered about values and development? It's because we expect you, you have a moral duty to support values and development. And again, as you are advancing in society, you'll find that you'll be called upon to practice that more and more uh, because values are the backbone of a nation's future workforce, and um, whether you are working in the public sector or private sector, this is really very important. You also want to be able to understand and practice these good values so that you can be a good citizen. And so, as I head towards finishing what I'm saying, I want us to take another uh, item home. That human capital is extremely important. And especially at your age, what you invest in yourself in terms of education, in terms of skills, in terms of values, in terms of networks, it is very, very important. I also want to say, if you end up in the public service, you'll find some code of rules that govern the way you should conduct yourself in a way that is known to be one which is supporting uh, good values in the public sector. And so... Let me conclude what I'm saying so that I can keep to the time I was given, that I want you to note that the base of tomorrow's family units in these nations is yourselves. Is any of you here married with children? Yeah. Can I have my show of hands? Those of us who are married and have children, raise your hands. So raise your hand, Moleni. Catherine? And so, thank you. Thank you for being honest. And so I want to say, the guys I am seeing here, and guys is both the male gender and the female gender. Cindy Hey, eh? good. So the guys I am seeing here, you are tomorrow's family units. And in some engagement I had with some people in um, a fairly marginalized part of Kenya, what I realized, actually it's part of an urban settlement, what I realized is that what is very important, apart from what you do as a person, is your family setup is how you have been supported in your family system. So I want us to have a declaration that you are going to aspire to have a family that has good value systems. Can we have that as the Pangani declaration? That you are going to aspire in future to have families that have good values because that's the backbone of a society. And so for, we, we expect you to remain aware of our national values so that you can be the guardians of our future generations and you can be the change agents that will make our country a developed country the way our friends and our uh, lady here said, where we are better than Brazil. To begin with my coffee. <laughs> where we are better than Turkey. To begin with my coffee. Even the so-called Mauritius, the so-called Malaysia, name them. We should be better than them before and within your generation because you are smart and good leaders. You are transformative leaders. Yeah. 
And my brothers, because my time is spent, I want to say in my life, Was that a yes or a no? Yeah, in my life, I am a teacher also. So if you found me talking like your principal in your high school or your teacher for physics, it is not by mistake. I lecture in Strathmore Business School. I teach the master's students and I supervise the PhD students. And so I want to leave you with a quote from none other than Mahatma Gandhi. You have heard that name? Yes. Does he come from America? No. Hands up who say he comes from Australia. What's wrong with you? Hands up who say he comes from Africa. What history did you do? Okay. So Mahatma Gandhi is the guy that I'm going to quote. And um, this applies to institutions and individuals as well. Your beliefs, my brothers and sisters, your beliefs, what you believe in, it becomes your thoughts. So you start with what you believe is what you'll be thinking. Your thoughts, what you think about, becomes your words. That is what you speak. What you speak as your words, as I've said, will become your action. That is how you'll be doing things. And then your action will become your habits. And your habits becomes your values. And your values, my brothers and sisters, this is one of the things that you must remember, will define your destiny. That's the connection. Your values will define your destiny. If you have the wrong values, you'll head the wrong way. If you have the right values, you'll head the right way. And so start with your beliefs. Make sure you have got the right belief system. That will define your thoughts. That will define your words. That will define your actions. That will define your beliefs. Sorry, it will define your habits. And that will define your values. And your values... Of course, God being there will define your destiny. I wish you very, very good luck in life, and I'm seeing transformative leaders in front of me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bonnie.